mean, the, the Grand Prix of Macau, Formula 3, it, it did play a, a big role in my career. I always had a special uh, feeling. As a driver, you know, I joined Venturi back in, um, back in season four, uh, and we are here now in season eight, and I'm still with the team. What I'm really proud of, you know, is the evolution of, uh, of this Venturi uh, uh, adventure. We were not at the level that we are now. So I hope that season eight will be the best version of this Venturi experience. So um, I was racing in Formula 3 in Euro Series and that must be in Hockenheim in 2007, I guess. I've got my fellow um, Swiss friends, Sebastian Birmi and uh, Romain Grosjean. Good memories. With the Romain, actually, we grew up like in the same town. We both have the, the same age also with Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian is, uh, is coming from Aigle. There is quite more, uh, more distance, but uh, Romain, you know, we grew up in the, same, uh, in, in the same town and so. My main rivals were uh, Valtteri. Valtteri was uh, racing now in, uh, in Formula 1 with, with Mercedes. Marco Wittmann, who then became uh, two times uh, DTM champion. You know, Formula 3 Euro Series, at that time, you know, the top guys were always having like good chances, you know, to make a good career. So doing good results there, you know, was, uh, was, was giving you good possibilities, let's say, you know, to continue. It was actually, for me, it was uh, essential because, uh, you know, if I want to become a professional driver, it was the only chance for me, you know, to, to then continue uh, racing. And uh, I remember when I won the Formula 3 Euro Series Championship, I was already a Volkswagen driver, but Audi came to me and they gave me the possibility to become a professional driver in the, in the DTM series. I mean, the, the Grand Prix of Macau, Formula 3, it, it did play a, a big role in my career. I won several times there. I always had a special uh, feeling. As a driver, you know, some, some tracks you're going to be very easily competitive and some tracks you're, it's going to be a, a struggle. In Macau, for some reason, it was always for me quite, quite easy, let's say, to be competitive and I always did quite a lot of results. I remember the first time I, I, I went there, actually, so I did the, the 2007 um, Euro Series Championship and then everybody was talking about Macau. Everyone was like really excited and uh, there was so much hype around that event and I really wanted to go and uh, it was a struggle, I remember, to, you know, to find the budget, you know, to do that race. But uh, we found a way and, uh, and I had the chance to go there and I was really excited and everything went actually quite well during that weekend until the pre-final. I think I qualified for my first time like third. Uh, which was really, really good because you had a lot of good drivers. A lot of them actually ended up in, in Formula 1 and uh, in pre-final I did a mistake. I actually went into the back of, uh, of Sebastian. Uh, we're still speaking about it uh, together and, uh, and, and yeah, but it was, uh, it was a fantastic uh, first time for me. It's my Mercedes time in, in DTM. Yeah, I have good memories, fantastic team, yeah, fantastic moments. I started in DTM back in 2011. Until 2016, I was racing for Audi, ended up a vice champion in 2016 and decided to go for, uh, decided to change, to go for a move and uh, go to, to Mercedes uh, back then. So I did 2017, 2018 with them. Unfortunately, they, at the end of 2017, they uh, announced their retirement from DTM. I struggled the first year, but the second year I was a title uh, contender and uh, yeah, I still remember, you know, all the good memories, the victories. In the end, you know, the goal is always the same. It's to drive, you know, the car, you know, to, to its limit, to the limit of the tires, the limit of the brakes. You have to understand quite quickly what you need to do well, let's say, you know, to go fast with, the, with these different cars. It's for sure a challenge. And initially I was struggling with it because at some point I was doing a lot of different like championships and I loved it. And um, it's, it's definitely not easy to jump, for, let's say, from a DTM car to a, a Formula car, then back to a GT car. They all require, uh, different like things as a driver and uh, it's definitely a challenge. These last 10 years I had the chance you know to yeah to compete in like in very competitive championships and uh, back then you know pretty much all the drivers like in the championship were were good it's the same as as here like in Formula E you know it's difficult to pick one up. Uh, I had great battles with uh, with Gary Paffett uh, I at, at some point also I had uh, as a teammate Matthias Ekström I learned a lot from him. Marco, which I knew from, uh, from Formula 3, we had a lot of battles there. We uh, gave him a, a good run, like 2016 for the title. So uh, Antonio, actually, I, uh, I, I had good battles also with him. So yeah, it's difficult to pick one up because you had like so many good drivers. One of the weirdest uh, moments in my career. It's, it's difficult, you know, to, to describe it. We were coming from a disaster test 
here in Valencia. And we thought we would have no chance, you know, during the season to do results. Actually, went, we, we went actually in, uh, in Hong Kong just after my win uh, in, in, the, in, the, in Macau, actually. So I, I had just become world champion. And things were running like extremely well, actually, for us also in Hong Kong. And the uh, car was competitive. I remember in my first ever Formula E race with the province qualifying, so we had to start from, from the last row. And I came back sixth or seventh. And you know, in Formula E, normally the, the energy management and the, the races are the, the most difficult part. And this was actually for me during these races, you know, the easy part. And the second race, I found myself like leading the entire race and uh, ended up doing a, a mistake, spinning around because I wanted to do the fastest lap. Here's Eduardo Mortara, three laps to go in the second round of the Formula E Championship. Daniel Lapp is using say. his fan boost now. I was going to say, Mortara, Mortara made the decision top. for him. Oh, oh, he's oh, spun. spun! Mortara has spun down at Hong Kong Station Half when he looked through. to be in control of the e Prix. And Daniel Lapp now is leading the race on his birthday with just two and a half laps to go. Mortara's thrown it away. I guess I, I, guess I was overconfident, uh, yeah, and... Uh, and yeah, and uh, it's, not a, it's not a great memory, actually. When you're leading a race with six seconds, uh, uh, you know, margin, and, and actually everything is, <laughs> everything is pretty much done. I think it was actually three or four laps to the end. It was, you should not do these mistakes as a professional driver. But I learned from them and uh, I moved on. Yeah, this is my last victory in, uh, in Macau. So it was uh, during the GT World Cup. So after my uh, F3 times in Macau, I went to do the race in, in GT. I was putting so much pressure on me because it's very little details that can be uh, very detrimental, you know, for the results. And so you have to be, yeah, spot on perfect, you know, the entire weekend. That was, that was very difficult, like in Macau. But during that year, I must say, like it was, that win was very positive because I was coming from a difficult season in DTM with Mercedes and winning that one and becoming, um, let's say, worker, cha worker champion for them was a big relief. Uh, so it's uh, season five, my first victory in Hong Kong. A special one because I, I hadn't won it on track. I think that Sam had won it because he, he, um, I think he had a contact with, uh, if I remember what, with, with Lotterer that was leading. They gave him a, a penalty and in, in the end, um, basically they ended me the, the victory. And at the end of the race, I kind of knew that there was the possibility that, you know, that these things, you know, could come and uh, yeah, so I was quite happy. It was already beautiful for us. We've always been a, a very small team, you know, to do good results, podium. Podiums for us was always um, something special. So we were already, uh, obviously, we were obviously very, very happy, you know, to finish on the podium and uh, maybe uh, the chance of a victory was there. It was something fantastic, you know, to have a, a win uh, in Hong Kong and my first win in Formula League. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's my daughter. It's the, it's the best thing. Uh, that happened to me in, in my life, but that's uh, quite simple, actually. Your entire, actually, mindset is changing because you're not doing the things, actually, just for you or for your wife, because I was, I'm married, but you, you're doing it, uh, you're doing it, actually, everything now, I, I do it, I do it all, mainly for her. And uh, all the decisions that I'm taking, I probably think about them like, more because she's gonna have to pay the consequences of the decisions that I'm, that I'm having. So I'm, I'm probably thinking more about the decisions that I'm, that I'm taking. Uncomfortable. <laughs> it turned out to be like a, a very good overtaking maneuver. But when you have these things happening, you don't, you don't, you don't feel well. You, you feel extremely uncomfortable because you can see that, okay, I mean, it's, it's great uh, when things are going well, but when they, when they don't, and, uh, and actually when I was in the car, I, yeah, I, uh, I was not sure, you know, if, if things were going to go, to go well for us. A few things happened there, like uh, I, was on, I was on the attack mode, so obviously I had more power and more speed than, than the two cars in front of me, and they, they moved kind of like in, in, in a bit in a strange way, especially uh, Verline at the end of the straight. So I had to react quickly, and uh, fortunately, let's say, uh, nothing happened, and, uh, and we had uh, some, some good footage. Hey, look, I'm a dad. I'm 34. You know, when I'm in the car and I have to do these moves, my art is just stopping. And um, yeah, I had Verline in front of me, uh, just moving at the, the, the last minute. And uh, well, I, I was quite surprised with, with his move, so I had to go on the left. 
and managed to outbreak uh, both of them. It was, uh, I think it was a key moment for my race. As an overtaking maneuver, as a driver, uh, you tend, you know, to, to like uh, the, the ones that you are um, that you have full control in it, and, and everything is uh, is proper millimetric, and uh, everything is really well organized, like really well executed. Or oh, this is the way I see it. This was more down to luck, and also the other uh, the other being able actually to kind of like avoid me also. 2021 has been a very very special year for me. I have never had like such a yeah, such a year, year like that. Like, firstly, uh, I mean, there is this one. Obviously, this is this is in Berlin, but uh, you there was already the one in Riyadh, and uh, the one in Riyadh was even was even worse. And and clearly, did yeah, these were like really bad moments. Unfortunately, the, the one in Berlin also took me away. You know, the chance you know to fight for the championship, and I think that I had uh, quite decent chances actually, maybe to go for it, or at least uh, I would have liked to have the chance to have a proper go at it. Like my teammate show uh, afterwards, like in the race, we had the race, we had the race car to win, and uh, and I think that I could have done quite decent in that race too. So, so in Formula, we always we we often had um, like up and down moments. I think that this is not only due to me, but it's also due to the to the fact that uh, as a small team, it's difficult for us to always compete at our best level. We've been better and better and better through the years. And we've became like more and more constant. But uh, clearly you have like some weekends where, you know, it clicks that, you know, when the car and the team and, and, and myself, you know, we are doing like a, you know, a very, very good job. Um, we can definitely see it and we can definitely show it. And now what we have to do and improve is these weekends where, you know, we are not as good. And I guess that this will give us even more the chance you know to fight for uh, even better things in the future i'm never happy with the good things and i tend to be always like very very sad and fr uh, frustrated with the with the things that that went uh, bad so i will tend to always remember you know for example what happened like in riyadh what happened like in berlin and i will quickly forget you know the the really good weekends and in a way it's what kinds of like pushes me always to try to do better it's coming a little bit from my karting days and uh, and also from I guess like from when I was little they were always trying to push me when I was not having the results and when when I was doing well and winning races and going on the podiums things were things were kind of like normal or it, this is the way they were uh, they were perceiving it and uh, I kept it actually during my career so emotionally it's difficult I will not lie but it's kind of like always pushing you to do to do better. I joined Venturi back in um, back in season four. Back then they gave me the possibility, you know, to join a Formula E, which was, uh, um, I mean, a championship with with a lot of hype. And uh, actually, I really wanted to, you know, to, to try to give it a go and uh, and, and challenge, you know, the, the, these guys. I, I thought I had um, sort of like the skills, you know, to do well like in this championship because most of the races were in. Uh, street circuits and I was, I'm kind of like a street circuit specialist, let's, let's say because I won quite a lot of races like in the past, not only Macau but also Norris Ring Po. So I thought I had the skills, you know, to do it and, um, but it never really came and um, and season four, uh, Venturi gave me the chance, you know, to, to join this championship and I uh, actually really enjoyed it and, uh, and we are here now in season eight and I'm still with the team. There is everything, you know, to do uh, in, in season eight. What I'm really proud of, you know, is the evolution of, uh, of this Venturi uh, uh, adventure. I came in season four and, um, and we were not at the level that we are now. So I hope that season eight will be the best version of, uh, of this Venturi experience.